Welcome to another episode here of Full Scale Fixes. Today we are changing out, as you can see in the thumbnail, spark plugs and the wires on the 2010 Jeep Wrangler. Um, this is the 3.8 liter V6. Uh, just to start out right now, I'm going to go ahead and go over the uh, parts for you. I ended up just getting them all at AutoZone real quick just so I can get it done. But one of the uh, recommended spark plug champion. They got a different number, but the actual part number that they list in here. We got the RE14 PLP5 or equivalent. Then that's going to be a gap you want to set it to. But there's the number again. I'll link it below. Well, not link it, but I'll list it. And you guys can uh, check those out or get whatever spark plugs you desire. Uh, I have anesthes here, but I just grabbed some while it's there. It's fairly inexpensive, and then some dielectric grease. Again, just bought it because I don't have any on hand right now. I need to get some. Part number for the plugs. Now, even though the box shows these, they do not look like that. They do look like your uh, standard ones with the uh, boot on the end, but the... 90 degrees so don't be alarmed if you're there and buying these the box is just a generic picture so um, and then if you need go pick up a little cheap gap gauge I'll uh, grab mine real quick and show you this is the one I bought probably a year ago cheap AutoZone has them they have other types of gappers too but if you're not looking for anything fancy you can get one there so other than that, uh, I'm going to grab a uh, socket and stuff and the spark plug socket. Hopefully I got the one that fits and uh, start going through this stuff. So I figure just walk through the tools I'm going to use. If any new tools that I don't tell you here come up, then this, I'll just let you know when I use them. Uh, got a 5.8 spark plug socket. Came with my uh, Stanley socket set. Only difference if you're not familiar, it just has a rubber kind of grommet thing inside. So when you uh, go to loosen the spark plug, this tip part kind of gets sucked into the uh, rubber piece and will pull it out a little bit easier. But that's the only difference. These do uh, vary in size, so make sure you have the uh, right socket. But for this, particular vehicle it's going to be the 5 8 I'm using a 3 8 drive just a long handled ratchet nothing fancy and I grabbed a couple extensions I don't know what I need so I got a small one and a long one then I've seen people use regular sockets before and just crack them loose and then uh, you just put this on the tip and pull it out that way these ones I think are pretty exposed, so shouldn't be too hard to get them out. But um, we'll do the boot because I never use this. It'll be the first time using this socket out of there finally, so I'll use this to start. But worst case, I'll swap over. Figure probably won't be a bad thing to uh, show you gapping one of these. Um, so when you open the box, they're all individually wrapped in their own box. And take it out. It's like that. Be careful not to bang any metal and stuff against the ceramic parts. You don't want to crack it. So, as I showed you in the book earlier, the gap here needs to be between 0 .048 and 0 .053 so we're going to make sure that's correct some spark plugs come pre-gapped um, but I just want to always you know just verify but start on the smallest point which here is the uh, 0 .020 or 20 just slide it in there and then slowly and gently just run it around just like that then once it catches and doesn't move, you kind of know where the gap is. Looks like this one's a little tight, 
so we're going to open it up just a hair. By doing that, we are just taking that lip right here, and a lot goes a long way, so just ever so gently bend it up. Not much. Recheck it. That one's about 49.049 now. So I might just do a little bit more because I want a little bit toward 50, just in the middle kind of. So let's see where that gets us. Alright. It's going to be close enough for me. And then uh, if you happen to spread this too much, just take the end and push down on it. Pretty simple. Nothing too crazy. Just uh, got to verify your gaps. Make sure that's all set. Once you get those ready, then we'll uh, be able to head under the hood and check out what's going to be in the way, if anything. I'm pretty sure this vehicle here is pretty open. I remember when I was taking off the exhaust manifolds, it's, at least the pet driver's side is good. The other side might be a little bit tighter, but we'll make it work. Got the hood popped open. I might even fold it all the way back working on that side because it's a little tighter. But um, you can see here are the spark plug wires. I'm going to start on this side. And pretty much the best thing to do if you're unsure, uh, just match up the size of your spark plug. So pull one off at a time and just uh, measure it up to the new one. Make sure the same length and uh, you'll be all set. In this case, these three are the same. They go on this side because there's no uh, little plastic tubing on it to protect it from heat and stuff like that compared to the other side that I'm going to show you real quick. The other side has this tubing on it so you can tell them the difference. And they're really long because they got to go, sorry, bumping you guys from that side all the way over here and they have different ends as well. So can't mix them up so I'm going to do one on this side for you guys and then just kind of fast forward through the other two and then we'll jump to the other side and work on that side. So I ended up buying the uh, Duralast gold ones. They had one set cheaper that was like 23 bucks. This was 30, 31. Um, so you can buy whatever one but I just kind of went in the middle of the road and on here it says you can they want you to start with the longest wire but just start with whatever one you want but like I said on this side I'm just going to go ahead and pull one at a time and do it that way and also this does come with some dielectric grease in the plug wires so you don't need to buy some but if you want to have extra just in case you can always do that like I did but I didn't know it came with any so I already cut that and I can't tell you the price on these spark plugs because I threw the receipt away and I don't remember looking so but they're not too bad so just for the sake of this video I'm going to start just on the bottom this is the longest one on this side so we're going to go ahead and pop this top one. Before I get too deep into it, I want to just grab uh, some gloves because I'm going to be doing other things probably in the middle of this stuff. So this top one, we're just going to wiggle it loose here. Just like that. That pops off. And then these bottom ones might be tough. You don't want to pull on the cord. You want to go down on the boot and pull them from down there. And you can see these are the, uh, are the originals, Mopar. They're actually labeled number six. And you can see six on there, and so on and so forth. Uh, generally, when you want to do this, just check your owner's manual on what mileage you should be changing your wires and spark plugs. But generally, according to Google, it's between 60,000 miles and 100,000. Uh, this is at 87,000 right now, so almost in the middle. So this first one, I'm just going to go with the regular socket here. 
Then on these other ones, I might try the uh, actual spark plug remover socket, but it seems to be a little hard to get back on this one, so. Then you want to do this on a cold engine because if you have aluminum block and it's hot, you could pull the threads out. So make sure your engine's cooled down or cold. And if you're not going to use the actual socket for this, just make sure you're uh, careful not to bust anything up. On the spark plug. So just to make sure we got the same ones going on here, you just kind of want to verify them next to each other. Same brand and everything, so good there. If you guys want, you can uh, mark, like punch a hole in a cardboard box and stick these through. And then just uh, keep them in the order so you can go ahead and look at them after you're done. But if not, you can just uh, chuck them back in the box and pitch them. In my case though, I'm just going to mark six because that's what it was. And then I'll just go ahead and check those out when I get time later in the uh, day or week. So now I'm going to go ahead and prep the boot. Again, if you're unsure, just uh, grab a similar size one and measure them together. Like I said, this one's the longest one on this side, so it should be there go the socket. It should be easiest to find it, but just line them up like that. Run them down, and they should be relatively the same size. Looks like the new one's even a little bit longer, so that would be the one we put in. And the dielectric grease, all I'm doing is uh, just squeezing a little bit inside each boot. Nothing too crazy. Just gives it a better contact. Try to keep some of that water out too. And corrosion. Same thing you do on your uh, battery terminals. But yeah, I'd grab another uh, extra pack of that stuff just in case. Worst case, you have some extra laying around, or you can put it on the uh, battery terminals. So um, now that is prepped. You can also blow, take compressed air or something, and blow out the uh, area where you're working. Get all the debris and stuff out. I'm not too worried because I just had all that stuff apart for the uh, gaskets and manifold stuff, so I'm not worried about it, but it might be a good idea if you guys can. Get the can, uh, compressed air, use that as well. Something to get all that debris and dirt out so don't come in contact. And then uh, get some anises here. One that I pulled out was pretty tough, so... A little bit of this goes a long way. Don't to go too crazy. So here I'm just doing a little bit right there. Probably could leave it or you could just spread it around a little bit. It's going to all get mixed into itself. A little bit of that. And then I'm going to grab the spark plug socket that fell. Put that in and then I'll... Uh, hand start this and then uh, torque it down. Alright guys, if you like me and haven't used the spark plug socket boot yet, um, might be tough to get it in, but once you uh, just keep pushing down you'll be fine. Just make sure you don't uh, push on that up there. And if you want, you could even wait till after getting it in to put the anti-seize on because that gets everywhere. So from here, just going to go ahead and put it in. I'm trying to work around you guys.
like with everything it's important to hand thread it in there just to make sure it's going in nice and smooth and then get the ratchet and snug it up so some people will uh, torque it spec some will just snug it up if you want to torque it to spec um, you can double check it but every form I've seen said 12 foot pounds so that's what I'm going to do so if you're looking to use these it might get stuck on there um, I just got a pair of pliers just grab the uh, inside just get some leverage and it pulled off but I think I might just try the regular socket from now on just to make it a little bit easier because this thing's just a pain to work with so up to you your choice but um, let's put that wire on and get going so again got the dielectric grease on there run this down push it down to you that you click and then you'll take your other piece and you'll just slide it right up here and pop it into place same way wait till you hear that click if there's a click yep there you go hear the click and double check and that one's good so for your guys sake I'm just gonna do these two top ones off camera it's the same exact uh, method I'm using on this one and that one um, I will pick back up after I finish that side then I'll head to this side this is the one where you gotta go behind the back of the motor and go over there and deal with all that mess so this side pretty easy like I said they're all right here so you should be fine on this portion of it this side is complete uh, went smooth no issues uh, like I said you guys should be fine over here no big deal um, got about that much that electric grease left so I'd suggest maybe getting some and there's the NSEs. Again, just a little bit goes a long way, so don't go crazy. It looks like it's aluminum NSEs, so if you have some, you don't need to pick this up, but it just helps next time you change them to uh, pull them out easier. But this side's done, so next are these three, which are located on the other side, and are the headache ones. So, spark plugs live way down there you can see they route up they're guided back here all the way around to over there hopefully it isn't too bad it's just mostly getting them out over here and just routing them correctly so let's uh, move some stuff around and get these things going so I think I'm gonna get this little hose clamp that keeps these together take that off just so it's one less thing and then start maybe with the uh, number one wire right here in the front I'm just kind of work my way back um, might need a swivel because it's a little tight down here so I'm gonna grab that and uh, try to get this thing loose and then by swivel this is what I mean You guys are getting that loose. That's all it is, just pry up on that little tab right there. That comes loose, I'll show you real quick. If you missed it, come in there, just work that with a flat head. You pry up on that and it should come out. And then you can see the witness marks where it goes back on. So shouldn't be a big deal and then you know this portion goes on that bolt so and then before I go too far I'm gonna loosen up this bracket as well this one came loose for me but there's one in the back too you gotta get at okay I did that far back one this is the very front one there's three in total should be if we can get a flat head under here just 
work it under. There we go. There are tabs, so be careful. Try not to break them, but that will not release that wire all the way up. I'm going to go over there on the uh, number one side and unplug that. So that one's free. I'm going to go ahead and uh, fish that one around to the other side. Try to give you guys the best view. By the way, I did uh, fold the hood all the way back on this side because it's a lot easier to work with compared to if it wasn't. Looks like there's another clip on the other side I'm going to have to loosen because they're holding them together. I'll try to show you guys real quick. Right there is another clip we're going to have to get loose. Looks similar to the other one, just on that edge right there. Looks like you can pry it open with the flathead, so I'm going to do that. And uh, hopefully that's the only clip back there. Okay, so decided to cut the camera off because this is the bracket I was trying to get over there. It sits like this, but basically it's kind of tough to get to, and I decided why not pull all three. And then make sure you know how they laid out here, which is one, three, and five. If you want, you can do it like that. Um, and if you have factory, they say the numbers on them. But then this bracket that you pull off also has one, three, five, so you kind of know how they go through the grooves. This sits on here like this. So, you'll see it, these, these just go onto the uh, valve gasket, top of the bolts. So, you'll see it, but it sits like that. Be careful, because like mine's brittle and that back one's dangling by a thread, so I might rip that one off, but it's zip tied or something. But, those are labeled. This is not labeled. And then, just make sure you know how they go. On the motor itself, which again, one, three, and five, if you're looking at it this way. I'm going to lay these out for you guys and kind of give you the, the lengths of each one. So maybe give it, you guys, a little bit easier time. So you can do it your way, but I found that easiest. Just pull the three here and just from that side pull all those out and just uh, make sure they don't get caught up over on this side so try to make these as even as possible the longest one over here is going to be your number one and that's in the middle here going down second longest will be number three and then of course the fifth one will be your shortest one so just a little heads up for you guys hopefully that helped I'm going to put it back together off camera just because routing it, you can't really see anything. And it's the same process as the other side. Just um, maybe have to use a swivel on the spark plugs because it's kind of tight in there. Um, if you want, you can do a bungee like I did here. And just bungee it up just to hold those uh, two hoses back. But up to you. I'm going to get that all done and then if I have anything weird or different, that I have to do I'll let you know at the end but for now I think the swivel on these spark plugs might be the only difference alright so I wanted to do a quick update so after I pulled the wires all out I went ahead and tackled each spark plug um, use a swivel socket on all of them the only tough one really was this back one right here and really wasn't too hard getting it put in and started. It was mostly just getting it out. If yours isn't stuck too bad, probably have too much trouble, but this is the setup I did down there. And I did crack the ceramic on the old one, but luckily it stuck in the socket. It wasn't too bad. So be careful on that. But on the other ones, I did the swivel and a short. 
short one like this. That setup. So do whatever setup you want, and you just gotta work around that one hose. But otherwise, not too bad. And then just getting that back one started, you can't see. You can try mirror like I did. It didn't really help too much, but um, that one I got started pretty quick somehow. So I just got lucky, but um, that was the toughest challenge there. So now I am going to go ahead and run those wires around. So wish me luck, and I'll uh, catch you guys up in a second. And one more note. Just touch base real quick on um, like I said if you guys are taking this part you already know by taking it apart but you see those two valve bolts down there that's where that one and that one will seat and then this one will sit on the very top one in the back if I can't see it Let's see if we can zoom in no it's right it's behind that bolt let's, let's see if I can touch it for you guys But it's back here with my fingers, you know it is top left uh, valve bolt. But that's where that's gonna be sitting. And then I wanted to show you kind of what I'm gonna do with the uh, new wires. So on these wires, I noticed them on the bird poop. The old ones have the short wire loom to protect it, like these do. And then the new ones have a little bit longer, but same thing, wire loom at the end. See these a little bit shorter on the originals. But they don't have anything in the middle like the old ones, so I think I'm going to go ahead and peel off the old one here. Wire loom, it just, you see that slit, and you just peel it right off. I'm going to put those in the middle, and then um, I laid these out. So I took a paint marker and put the number so when I run them through, I'm not confused on which one's which. I'm going to do the same on the other end, even though... The different lengths, this will just make it easier for uh, when I go and run them through because who knows what's going to happen and if they're going to get twisted up underneath behind the stuff. So just a little trick and then of course adding some extra protection if you do have the original plug wires. So, Alright guys, wrapped it up here. Uh, running these wires is terrible, sucks. But um finally got it. I uh, attached that bracket on that side, uh, plugged in those after, but I just fished those three to the back over here the best I could. And then went over there, put the dielectric grease on, plugged them in, and then came over here and I don't know if you guys can see, but I pretty much ran the wires right through there you can see that bracket and I came through around that back hose and then I went in between these two see those uh, two wire looms right there I just went in between those two and came down and through and yeah trimmed up these two a little bit the uh, wire looms because they were way back here but those are plugged in fit the ones good uh, they don't putting those extra wire looms in the middle kind of prevents me from plugging in the uh, That portion right there, but not a big deal. They got two clamps here that third one broke off back there So you can't clamp it down anyways, but um, That's pretty much it as far as the uh, running of the wires like I said just mark your plugs the numbers on each side just makes it a lot easier and um, you just gonna have to fiddle with trying to get through these, but once you do, it's not too shabby. But I do want to show you the uh, one spark plug I pulled out. That was pretty rough. Oh, and uh, I didn't open the other one up. This happened to be just enough. I could probably scrape more out. Just enough dielectric grease. You guys can see here. Unopened, so buy some if you want, but I did not have to use it. And don't put any on that, don't put any on those until you actually run the wires through and get them situated because you don't want that attracting uh, dirt and grime and all that. So make sure you apply that afterwards. So I think it was on the number four plug. 
Like I said, I didn't check these before. I just knew it needed to be uh, changed. And you can see how bad that gap was. It was really big and bent. So never a bad idea to do some maintenance. So probably well overdue. But that will wrap up this video, guys. Please hit the subscribe button. Hopefully this helped you guys out. Comment below if you have any questions. I'll answer them the best I can. And I will catch you guys next time. Well, guys, I wanted to start the vehicle at the end of the video. Forgot. But uh, other things happened, so this is being thrown in afterwards. Um, I went ahead and started it and had a misfire. It was, like, knocking a little bit. Um, just missing and so that wasn't good obviously um, it could be you know gaps are off could be bad spark plug could be bad bad wires um, numerous things so uh, first thing I did I just took that one spark plug out just checked the gap it was fine which I checked them anyways ahead of time but you never know so I just checked one randomly and then um, pulled these two plugs off just to uh, see if they were loose and they were tight so I wasn't too concerned about that and then I just went around and double checked push the boots in pushed these connectors all the way nothing changed but you never know did that a couple times after starting it a few times it still had the misfire so decided let's start with the wires because that's the easiest I can take off and test the old wires and not have to take the spark plugs back out because that side's a pain. So these three I just took all the way out, um, marked them, and then put the old ones in. And then these three I just unplugged, set them here, and same with the other side. Unplugged them, set them aside, out of the way with the bungee cord. And then the old ones I plugged in and just ran across like you see the new ones here. I just ran them across, and misfire is gone, no issue. So, unfortunately, I had to pull the wires off, um, cleaned up, you know, the paint marker, made sure they looked decent. Went back to AutoZone, tried to get a replacement of the Jarlass Gold. They did not have any more of the gold, so I purchased the $23 ones, uh, like $7, $8 cheaper ones. Um, that originally was going to get anyways, but they had these in stock, so I got some cash back. These, um, they don't come with your little wire looms, the plastic. I noticed that, and then they really give you even less dielectric grease. That's a little dab right there. So that's the only real difference. I'm not too concerned. I could just throw the uh, wire loom from the old one on like I kind of did on the other set. So not a big deal. Saved eight bucks. And I tested these ones before running these to the back. I just did what I did before. Ran them across. Did the same over here. I'm going to start it for you guys just to show you that it does run smooth now again. So that's a bonus. Alright, with that said, I just wanted to show you guys that part of the video, just to make sure you guys, if you have the same problem happen, don't panic. Um, go ahead and start with the plug wires first, because those are the easiest to test. And as you can see, I had a defective set, so um, it is what it is. Uh, you know, nothing's perfect, especially working on vehicles. Never goes smooth. But um, these work. I'm going to take these off and reroute them again. Um, and then put some dielectric grease on the inside. And that'll wrap this up again. But glad it worked out. And I will uh, catch you guys next time. Please subscribe again. And enjoy your day.